tobacco prayer for this gathering here today to give thanks to the Creator for bringing us all together and to enjoy in the heartbeat of our drum. My name is Harry Hawk Edmonds. I'm here with Braveheart, my brother Braveheart. He's 88 years old and I'm 87 years old, so we're a couple of old bucks. <laughs> We're a couple old bucks trying to keep our culture alive and well and let you folks know that we're still here. Yes. This sacred tobacco prayer is all about honor and respect, uh, which is the native way. 
We honored just about everything, especially our mother, Mother Earth. Unfortunately, honor and respect is somewhat lost in today's world, folks, and we have to get it back. We have to stop. Yes, give it up. We have to stop respecting and honoring one another again, especially our planet. Mother Earth, she's not very happy what's happening to her, and she's showing it. I will also offer this sacred tobacco prayer in the English language, so you don't think I'm talking gibberish. <laughs> the tribe spoke many different dialects, but they were able to communicate and understand one another. This is the Algonquin dialect. This sacred tobacco offering is all about, as I say, say uh, respect and, uh, and honor. And I will begin. Katantawit. Numagni o witamog. Aki numagni o witamog. Okamus. Nupashad numagni o witamog. Ouchi chi kiriasin. Nupawas. Numagni o witamog. Tabatni anawayan. Numagni witamog or you uk nashikaki. A wampanayu, soanayu, patanayu, nanamayu. Tabatni anawayan, nuwachi, mami, neatam pog. Neg, pamanina chig. Neg, pamampa chig. Papanashi mwag. Medica quash maski tosh. Nemosag. A quitianamuk, we chi nina chig. A took, mask, makwashim, to napasag, sasaso, katatawit, numagni, awitamog. Oh, great spirit, I offer this tobacco. Mother Earth, I offer this tobacco. Grandmother Moon, I offer this tobacco. Grandfather's son, I offer this tobacco. I thank you. I offer this tobacco to the four directions. To the east, to the south, to the west, to the north. I thank you for all my relations. The winged nation, the creeping, crawling nation, the four-legged nation, the green and growing nation and all things living in the water. Honoring the clans, the deer, the bear, the wolf, the turtle, the snipe, and the rabbit. Great spirit, I offer this tobacco. Katabatash, I thank you for listening to me and enjoying that sacred tobacco prayer very sacred to our people. We offer tobacco in many of our ceremonies. Obviously, we know the harm of tobacco products used today, but we use it for ceremonial purposes only. And I want you young, young folks to understand that. Oh, who? Thank you. My name is Paul Walping Neopark, and I am the uh, Sagamore of the Council Seven Royal House Pocanoga. Pocanoga Tribe and Pocanoga Nation. I am the uh, tenth generation great grandson of the Massasoit Osamican who welcomed the pilgrims to this country. And Massasoit is a is a title. It means great leader. His name was Osamican Yellowfeather in our language. I am the ninth generation great grandson of Omenacom. Omenacom. You know him properly historically as King Philip of the King Philip Wars. And I am the uh, sixth generation great grandson of Simeon Simon, who was George Washington's hand picked bodyguard. When George Washington was coming to Patchogue, Connecticut, to take over the revolutionary forces, he stopped at Patchogue, and my great grandfather, Simeon Simon, was out there pinning all his men. He called him in, he wanted to know who he was. And he told George Washington, he showed him this, <clears throat> this deer skin with a star and seven crescents on it, which is what I wear here, and he told him, my line is a closed book, he couldn't talk about it. And so, 
he went with George Washington and he became his handpicked bodyguard. He was with them at Valley Forge. He was with them when he crossed the Delaware. He was uh, the Indian in the boat crossing the Delaware. He sent me an assignment. That's my sixth generation great grandfather. He's on the bicentennial coin of the town of Griswold, Connecticut. 200 year celebration of this country as a nation. Uh, 16, was it 1776 to 1976? So it was the bicentennial point. And there's also a portrait of him and George Washington in the Griswold Town Hall. Uh, I tell you about Simeon Simons because that was Pomenicon or King Philip's great grandson. So that's my great grandfather. That woman in downtown Providence, the mural, the Indian princess. You, have you seen that mural in downtown yes. Providence? Yes. Yeah. There's a mural. It's been out of the news. Uh, she was the last chief before me, Princess Redwood. Uh, that's my uh, first cousin once removed. Uh, she was the chief before me. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit of history about the uh, Poconoka tribe. Um, and uh, at Sagamore, I, I just want you to know that uh, <laughs> I'm the head chief. I have five, six chiefs under me. This, she's chief of the Poconoka tribe. Harry Hawk is actually from the uh, Anawas clan, who was, Anawas was the head Pinesi warrior for the Massasoit Osamequa, uh, and he was also the, what, what we call Pinesi, the head Pinesi warrior, he's like a five-star general in today's terminology. He was also uh, the Pinesi for King Philip, who was actually his nephew in the King Philip War. He was in his 80s when he was, uh, <laughs> fighting the King Philip War, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I have, uh, well, these, these are two of our chiefs. Uh, most of the people in our tribe are from our, our direct descendants from the Massasoit line. So you have people on this drum that are from Anawan's line, Kwana Kwana's line, uh, uh, Amy's line, which would be the Walmsley family. I have a chief from Amy's line. I have two chiefs from Kwana Kwana's line. One is here. In the United States, I have one also in uh, Nova Scotia, because a lot of our people went to Canada to uh, flee the, uh, the massacre of the King Philip War. The first exploits to lands within the Poconoco realm was by a Portuguese captain. His name was Miguel Cordero, and that was in 1502. And then in 1524, Giovanni Ferrazano came to these shores. He sailed into the Narragansett Bay, and then the Mount Hope Bay, and he wrote in his captain's log at a latitude of uh, 41 degrees 40 north, which put him right parallel to the seat of the Massasoit at Mount Hope, which is in Bristol, uh, Bristol, Rhode Island. At that time, it was known as Montauk. And he wrote about the inhabitants he saw on the shore, and he said they were the goodliest people he had ever seen because they were always lifting their hands to the Creator and praising the Creator and thanking the Creator for all he had done for them. He wrote back to the King of uh, France because he was uh, on this expedition for the King of France. And uh, to this day, we start off our ceremonies with prayer to the Creator, back with prayer, and that prayer, the song that we sing to Bhakti Uchi is to the Creator. Well, that's the way we started off, and it was about a hundred years later when the pilgrims came to these shores in 1620. And they actually came to Provincetown, they were blown off course, and I guess they didn't like the terrain there, it wasn't good for growing, and uh, so they got back in and they came down the shoreline and they went to the Norset country, they couldn't set anchor there because they were fired on by the uh, Norset Indians, <laughs> and uh, they finally landed in Plymouth. And, uh, that actually was a town, uh, it was Patuxent Village at that time. And the reason why they were being fired on by the Norses was uh, we were doing trade with the Europeans long before the pilgrims came here. And they had taken some of our people under the guise of trade onto their ships and taken, took them to Europe as slaves. And so this is why you've heard of Tisquantum or Squanto learn how to speak English, but he won his freedom and he came back to this country. The people that, the person that actually greeted the pilgrims was, was a Abenaki Sagamore, his name was Samoset. And he said, you know, welcome, welcome pilgrims, you know, welcome uh, Englishmen, I'm sorry. And they were surprised that this, this 
person could speak English, and he said, well, I'm going to get someone that can speak even better than me, and he went and got Squanto. And Squanto was like a, an emissary between the Massasoit and the uh, Pilgrims. Right? He was an interpreter and so forth and so on. So you're probably wondering, you know, how do we get to become Wampanoag? <laughs> well, was during the King for that, I'm trying to make this short because I know they tell me I talk too long. <laughs> so I forget where I'm going sometimes. You have to forgive me because I'm in my 80s too. So, <laughs> so where was I? <laughs> so, um, let me see. Well, don't, don't you so you're probably wondering how, how do we, we get the name of Wampanoag? It was during the uh, King Philip War, 1675, 1676. The colonial government outlawed the word Poconoke. And if you were male 14 years of age or older and you said you were Poconoke, they'd kill you on sight. So you didn't call yourselves Poconoke, they start calling us Wampanoag. And so that's why you see today a lot of these tribes, they call themselves Wampanoag. But the tribes that actually fought in the King Philip War against the English or the colonists were the only tribes that were supposed to be called Wampanoag. And a lot of the tribes that call themselves Wampanoag today never fought in that war. But that was a term that was reserved for the tribes that fought. That's how they, and Wampanoag really means Easterners. And that's what the tribes south of us and so forth, they, they recognize as an Easterners. But when they came to this land here, when the pilgrims came to this land, we had just gone from a tribe of over 3,000 warriors to just under 300 warriors because the, the great dying that hit our people, the plague, and this was from uh, 1616 to 1619. And so the master saw it, he, uh, he made a peace treaty with the pilgrims because he needed alliances against the warlike tribes, that, you know, the Narragansett and so forth and so on, that, we, that he needed protection from now. Uh, up until that time, uh, he had most of the land in this area. All the Solomons, the Solomons, which today is Seacon, today is Barrett and Warren and Bristol, Rhode Island. But back in the time of the, uh, Massasoit, Soames was actually, there was no Somerset, but it was <laughs> Somerset, Swansea, Rehoboth, Seacon, East Province. There was no East Province because East Province was part of Seacon. The boundaries have changed. Barrington, Warren, and Bristol was all part of Montauk. And the, the Massasoit, a lot of people don't realize it, but they think he lived in Pilgrim. He didn't live in Pilgrim, uh, Plymouth. He lived here. He lived right in... Bristol. Actually, Warren, where, where Warren, uh, the Warren Beaches, that's that's where the Royal Burial Ground is. He was right down the street, from <laughs> right, right around Blount Seafood. There's a little park like over there, and uh, they, the uh, Massasoit Spring. That's where Governor Carver, the first governor of the Plymouth Plantations, sent his emissaries, Hopkins and Winslow, Winslow, who later became governor. Uh, to meet with the Massasoit. They came right down here to Warren, Rhode Island, not down the Cape. A lot of people think it was right here. This area here, going toward Plymouth, from here out, was the most densely populated area of the New World. And that's why they call it New England. You know, Old England's across the pond, this is New England. And so Seacock, in the East Province, was actually part of Seacock. Uh, Warren, Barrington, Bristol, Warren, Barrington, and Bristol didn't become part of Rhode Island until 1748, I believe, or 1747, 1748, which is when Massachusetts uh, ceded that land there to uh, Rhode Island. So basically, that's just a little history about our people, and I'm going to get off the stage. Now. <laughs> <laughs> keep in time right here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the home, ancestral homelands of the Poconoke tribe. And as you said, the Poconoke tribe, the ancestral homeland, is Soams. And this is Soams. It was Barrington, Bristol, Warren, Swansea, Somerset, Rehoboth, Ponce of Providence. Did I get everything? That, that was, that was Soams. So right here is the land in which the Poconoke tribe would be. And we lived throughout the land and lands. We had hunting grounds and we had our um, winter camps and we had our summer camps. Over there is a picture of one of our winter camps. We call that Mar Margaret's Rock and that's right in the um, Swansea Seacock Warren area. Um, and there's 
you know, we also have, you know, a picture of, of you know, one of our Massasoit, it's um, there too. So, you know, when you think about the um, beginnings of um, this country, it started right here. It started right here because if the Massasoit who lived right here didn't give the okay for the tribes down the Cape to not war against the pilgrims, then we would have had a whole different outcome. So celebrate Seekonk, um, you know, um, it all started right here. So, you know, I want to thank all of you for, for having us. I see a lot of children here, and guess what? I'm a storyteller. I love to tell stories. And, and Sagamore, he was saying that when the explorers came, they saw us, saw us with our hands always up, stretched up. Think of the Creator. And you know what? The Creator saw that we were doing that. And so the Creator sent three messengers to our people to give our people gifts because we were such a good people. And so the three messengers came and they gave gifts to our people. And they told our people, take these and to plant them, and they would grow, and they would multiply, and that we were to share them with others. So we did just that. We, we planted them, they grew, they multiplied, and we shared them. Well, the three messengers saw that we did what we were told. And they said, well, it's time for us to go. And so they went down to the edge of the shoreline, right down to what we call Patumtuk, the lookout of Poconoke. But you know it is Mount Hope. I don't know if anyone's been to Mount Hope Farm to see the goats there. Mm -hmm. So, right down on the shore, right there, Mount Hope Bay, they turned into the, into the water and then they turned around as a sign to show our people they were sent from the Creator. They turned and they waved to our people and they turned to stone. <gasps> and do you know those, two, those three big stones are still there? right in the shoreline. So if you take a walk, if you take a hike with your family or with some friends, and you go down to, to the shoreline and you see the three big boulders, those are what we call the three sisters. And do you want to know what they gave to our people as a gift? What do you think they gave to us? A train? A car? No, no, they didn't. They gave us something to eat. What do you think it was? Um, wheat. Not wheat, but very close. They gave us corn beans and squash. Those were the gifts that they gave to us. You know what? I think we should take a break and maybe we could um, do a, a dance, right? Um, if anyone wants to stretch, you can just join us, just like a, a, just a um, intertribal um, song. Hmm? Okay, so before you, a round dance? Okay. Before you do that break, yeah. just, just to clarify, the Poconoke, she told you the Poconoke tribe lived in Soho. But our nation went all the way down to Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard Island, uh, Elizabeth Island, Pruden's Island. All that territory, all the way up here, was all uh, the Massasoit's territory. But the, but the tribe itself lived in Solons. There was like eight, over 8,000 people in the tribe. They had over 3,000 warriors. Some of my friends here. Some of the leaves. You know what? 
Those leaves are ready to fall to the ground. Can you guys wait until the leaves fall down to the ground? What are you going to do when all the leaves fall down to the ground? What are you going to do? Jump them. Throw them in the air. Yeah, you throw them into the air. Well, you know what? Many, many moons ago, the little American Indian boys and girls, they did not have cell phones. <laughs> they didn't have computers. They didn't have bikes. They didn't have all of the toys that you had today. So do you know what they played with? They played with the things of nature. They played outside. And one of the most favorite things that they would love to do is what you said. When all the leaves would pop down from the trees, they'd pick them up and they'd throw them in the air and they would jump in the piles of leaves and they would kick them around. Oh, so much fun. But oh, many, many moons ago, when the very last leaves fell down from the trees, the little, the little boys and girls got sad. They said, oh, we're so sad uh, how we wish they could live forever. And so the creator, to please his little Indian boys and girls, he said, I will. I will make some of the leaves live forever. And so out of the brown speckled ones, he made the sparrows, and they started flying around and around. And out of the red ones, he made the cardinals, and they started flying around and around. Out of the yellow ones, he made the yellow finches. And they began, all the leaves turned into birds. They began flying around and around. Oh, and the children were so happy. They were chasing after the birds and running after the birds. But you know what? The birds, oh, the birds were not happy. Do you know why they weren't happy? Because they, they didn't have a song, right? Everybody needs a song. Well, the birds didn't have a song. So the wise owl, well, he called a meeting of all the birds. He, he, he hit the drum. Because <laughs> when the drum plays, everybody gathers around. So all the birds came and they gathered around. And, and the owl said, said to the birds, I know what to do. I know how you can get a song. If you want a song, you have to fly up towards heaven as far as you can go. And before you come back down, you'll get your song. And you can come back down. Oh, the birds were so excited because they were going to get a song. And so, you know, whenever there's something to do, there's always someone who can't wait their turn. Me first, me first. Is there always someone who just has to be first? Oh, me first, me first. Well, that, that was old crow. Me first, me first, me first. Oh, the other bird said, all right, go ahead. So crow, he went on up, and when he couldn't fly any longer, he got his song, and he came back down. And he did a song for everyone. Caw, 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 caw. Yeah, all right. And then there's always someone else who just doesn't learn their lesson. Me next, me next, me next. Well, that was the Blue Jay. So Blue Jay went up, and he came back down with his song. How does the Blue Jay sound? Chirp, 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 chirp. Right? Okay. But you know what? There were some birds who were patient, and they waited their turn. They waited their turn patiently. Yep. One of them, oh, that was the metal lark. The metal lark went up to heaven, and when she came back down, oh, she had such a beautiful song. Mm, I can't even do it. <laughs> she had such a beautiful song. And the woodland thrush heard it and said, oh, oh, how would I would love such a beautiful song, such as she, but I'm such a little bird, and I, well, I... I can't fly that high. But she had an idea. She said, oh, I know what I'll do. I'm going to go next to the eagle, the great eagle. And when the eagle soars up to heaven, oh, I'm going to hold on to her feathers. And when the eagle turns to come back down, that's when I'm going to let go. And then I'm going to stop flying from there so I can get my song. Oh, and you know what? 
So when the eagle soared up towards the heaven, the woodland thrush was right there holding on. And the eagle got her, her song and, and came flying back down. But what did the woodland thrush do? Let go and started flying from there. And she flew up higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And when she couldn't go anymore, she got her song. And then she started flying back down. Well, that took a very long time. And all the other birds had been waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally she came and she saw all the other birds. All the other birds, they turned and they looked at her. And she realized that she had cheated. And she felt so ashamed that she, she got her head and she put her head down and she turned and she walked away from the circle. And she walked far, far, far deep, deep into the woods. And you know what? If you want to hear the most beautiful, the most heavenly song of them all, then you too have to walk deep into the woods very quietly. And if you're very quiet, you will hear the song of the woodland thrush. That's how the birds got their song. Now, I want to tell you something. The woodland thrush, she cheated, right? And so, so she went deep into the woods and no one really gets to hear her song. But I want you to remember, you can't cheat. It's not okay to cheat. And you can't cheat Mother Nature, right? You can't, I, I remember that Hawk was saying that um, the Earth, right, Mother Earth, yeah. is out of balance, yeah, right. right? And so it's very important that we take care of Mother Earth, that we don't cheat Mother Earth. Okay? It's very important that we don't litter. It's very important we take care of our water, right? Those things are very important because you know what? What you do to the earth, you do to yourself, right? If you pollute the earth, if you pollute the water, who drinks the water? You do, right? So if you pollute the water, you pollute yourself. And everything that is here on this earth, we have to live in balance with, okay? So I want you to remember that. If you see a spider walking, I don't want you to go like this. Oh, spider. <laughs> right? I don't want you to smush the spider. Leave the spider alone. Because we need the spiders, right? We need right. the spiders. Yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah. If we need the bees. Yeah. yeah. We need the worms. Yeah. We need the trees. Right? Do you know the trees clean the air that we breathe? We need the trees. And the animals need the trees to live in. Do you need your home to live in? Yeah. Well, the animals need the trees to live in. They need plants to live in. They need rocks to live under. Okay? So I want you to remember what you do to the earth because we live on a beautiful earth. Solomons is a beautiful place. Seekonk is a beautiful place. Let's take care of it. Okay? And when you take care of the earth, you take care of yourself and everybody else on it. All right? I want you to remember that. I think right now we're going to do a special dance. And as we dance around, we're sharing all of our work and our hard work. And as we display it and we go around, and at the end, sometimes some things get covered. We're spinning and sharing and showing our lovely work with our hands. And at the end of the dance, if there's a young man that you are interested in, then you can leave your blanket for him to pick up and for him to come and see about you. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Well, if you're married like me, I will just tell people I'm unavailable. I'm going to dance. Okay, ready? Okay, and we're going to stop the dance as a, as, you know, a young woman, as a young girl who's growing into womanhood. Yes.
Scott do a dance? Huh? Oh, thank you. Thanks, Okay. Um, so why don't um, maybe I'll I'll tell maybe one more story, um, and then if there's any questions, we can um, open the floor to questions, and then we'll wrap it up because we just have until two thirty. So. Let me see. Let me tell. Oh, I have a fun story. Because after fall comes what? We have spring, summer, fall. What comes? Winter. Winter's coming. Oh, and this is one of my favorite stories. And I don't think I will see you um, before winter or um, during winter. So I want to tell one of my favorite winter stories. It's the story about how the bear got its short tail. Does anyone know that story? No one knows how the bear got a short tail? Well, let me ask you this. Does anyone know that the bear used to have a long tail? The bear used to have a beautiful long tail, just like Mr. Fox. But many, many moons ago, this one bear who was hibernating, because bears sleep in the winter, this one bear was hibernating. But he woke up because he was hungry. He woke up and he went out of his cave and he went for a walk. And he saw Mr. Fox. And Mr. Fox had him a big string of fish. And he said to Mr. Fox, Oh, I'm hungry. Can I have some of your fish? And Mr. Fox said, If you want some fish, you have to go and get some yourself. Well, Mr. Bear said, Well, I'm usually sleeping in the winter. I don't know how to get fish. And Mr. Fox said, Well, you go over there to that pond. That's where I got my fish. And on the ice, you'll find a hole. That's where I got my fish. You have to go over there, and you have to get your tail, and you have to stick it down in the hole. That's how I got my fish. But if you want a lot of fish like me, then you got to sit there for a long time. You have to sit there until you feel a tingle here, a tingle there, a tingle all around your tail. Oh, 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 Mr. Bear was so happy. He said, I'm going to go get me some fish, a lot of fish. And so he went over there to the pond. He found the hole in the ice. He got his tail. He put it in the hole, and he sat there. And he sat, and he sat until he felt a tingle here, a tingle there, a tingle all around his tail. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going to have me a good meal. He went to get up, and he couldn't. He couldn't get up. He was stuck. Guess what? It had been so cold that day that the water froze all around his tail and he was stuck. But he pulled and he pulled and he pulled and he finally broke free. Uh-oh. But guess what happened? His tail stayed down in the ice along with all those fish. Oh, ever since then, the bear has had a short tail. <laughs> okay. Well, I think uh, we'll wrap it up. Um, if anyone has any questions that they would like to ask us, we can. We probably have a couple minutes for questions. Go ahead. Um, we've been learning about um, Jamestown and stuff. Mm -hmm. If you mentioned Swanto, and that's the part of it, I wanted to know what Jamestown had to do with them, too. Jamestown, Virginia? Or yeah. Jamestown? Yeah. Virginia. Yeah. Jamestown, yeah. Virginia. Would you like to feel that yeah. question, Sagamore? Sure. Yeah, Jamestown, Virginia was the first settlement in the New World for the colonists. So Plymouth Plantation was the second. So basically, the second ship that came here was supposed to, I guess it was supposed to be going to New York. I think it was going to New York. And uh, they were blown off course. But Jamestown is the first colony in, in the uh, New World, all right? That's the, that's the, uh, and, and they, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> they uh, actually uh, went, I'm trying to think of the name of the, uh, Powhatan. Powhatan was the head of the uh, Palatin Nation, and the queen of that nation today is uh, is his great granddaughter, 
I think, 11 generations, uh, Queen Anne, 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 and she is the chief of the uh, Rappahannock tribe, which is not the still in Jamestown, Virginia. We call and them our sister tribe, and we go down and tribe. visit them all yeah. the time, and sometimes right. Chief Anne comes up and right. visits we, us. We do programs <laughs> on in Jamestown yeah. on their, on their, uh, yeah. at the uh, plantations there. Someone else had a question. Someone else? Yeah, okay. Uh, in the 1600s, uh, yeah. what what kind of crops did the Indians uh, grow, if any, and, and did they uh, have a good variety and uh, want any information? Oh, did one? you miss my story on the three uh, sisters? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, well, well, in line with our story, the Creator, because we were such a good people and we were always giving thanks to the Creator no matter what. You know, that's why we had so many Thanksgivings, right? How many Thanksgiving yeah. do you guys have? How many? 175? One. One. Yeah. Right. <laughs> every, every year. <laughs> we have 13, right? Because one for every moon. Every moon, we're thankful for something. Every moon, we have a story. So we're a thankful people. The Creator gave us corn, beans, and squash. Um, that was the staple. Um, of you know of our diet, but of course we you know we did not have um, grocery stores like like you have today. So you know we we lived off of the earth, and um, because um, we are on the eastern seaboard, um, seafood was was a big mm -hmm. part of you know our our diet as well. But, but Someone we, else. But we, we actually we actually fed the pilgrims. Yeah, they were getting ready to go back to England. They had such a hard winter that we opened up our storehouses. And we actually fed the pilgrims at first Thanksgiving. Yeah. And actually, know? that was in October. Uh, Abraham Lincoln changed that to November when he became president. But the, that was actually our harvest Thanksgiving. And uh, <clears throat> at that first Thanksgiving, we had more than, uh, than turkey. We had bear meat, we had deer meat, we had lobster. We had, you know, all of the uh, things that you have here in uh, New England. Do you know what? If the men had a bad hunt, we had to have lobster. But King, King Philip actually bought eight deer to that first, uh, to that first Thanksgiving feast. Okay. Did someone else have a question? So I know that when I grew up, I always heard that uh, the natives um, taught the pilgrims how to fertilize their crops mm -hmm. using fish. Mm -hmm. um, but I've also heard that that is actually not the case. It, uh, and it was, I guess, I think Squanto that, was, that they gave credit for bringing that information to the pilgrims. So what did they use for... Yeah, the, you know, the, the woman would actually watch our woman and how we, you know, plant it and what we did. And they learned a lot from watching, watching our woman. They don't give women a lot of... Um, a lot of credit in history, and especially the pilgrims didn't write about their women so much, but in our culture we esteemed, and we still esteem women, and um, a lot of the, um, you know, pilgrim women learned a lot by watching our woman, and, and, you know, we still celebrate and have our heaven run, we still, you know, um, fertilize. Well, women were um, very important in our society, yeah. The men did the hunting, but the women did everything else. <laughs> they did. They did everything else. Yeah. And of course, we had women chiefs too. We did. You know, we had women chiefs. Uh, uh, for, uh, for instance, for Cassid, uh, they had uh, uh, who was squaw sachem of the uh, of the uh, Pacasa tribe. She was, she was okay. one of the most feared. Uh, more than so some of the men chiefs. All right. Sad more. We have time for like two more questions. Oh, okay. And very patiently, I know you've been having your hand up. Uh, very patient, just like the metal How did your dinosaur tail with the fox? Nice. You know what? The fox is a trickster. Oh my goodness. The fox is a trickster. Watch out for Mr. Fox. <laughs> because you know what? The bear doesn't have a long tail anymore, but who does? Who still has the long, beautiful tail? Mr. Fox does, yeah. <laughs> Um, that's kind of like, like lions right now because lions, the, the male lions usually sit down and they, they sleep for 24 hours and, and, the, and, the, and the lioness usually do that. That's right. That's right. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. And, then, and, then the, and then the men just eat, eat whatever they want. <laughs> okay. Well, it's 2.30, so I know that there's someone else coming in after us. I don't want to cut into their time, but we always end the drum, always close is out so um, our beautiful drum this is the heartbeat of Poconoke. Um, 
they are a heartbeat. So wherever um, wherever we go, our drum always goes with us. Can you take this out? out? Mm -hmm. The whatever you want to close with, yeah. Yahweh, Yahweh, oh hey. information. We do have adopted members uh, on, uh, in our tribe. And, uh, in order to be an adopted member, you have to be of Indian descent. So we have some Cherokees in our tribe. We have some Micmac in our tribe. So just not everyone's, uh, but most of the people in our tribe are from the different uh, lines of Massasoit. All right? So there's different, so you, the five chiefs are from the different lines of Massasoit. Those are the direct descendants of the Massasoit. Thank you, Aquine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.